Bonjour à tous. Uh, welcome back to Grenoble for the fourth week of this uh, French online summer camp by Commune Française. As you can see, I'm trying new things from Commune Française. I'm outside in the botanical garden, which is my favorite garden in Grenoble. It's the Jardin des Plantes. It's super quiet, super clean, fantastic view, very beautiful flowers and a pigeon might come in. So last day we talked about cultural differences. I talked to you about potential faux pas that you could make in French and in France and how to fix them and avoid them. Today we're going to talk about useful French for real life. Uh, I'm going to give you scripts for French that you can use if you happen to be visiting France. As usual, as in the last uh, three lessons, you can download the PDF of the lesson on communfrances.com. On the blog, you will find the vocabulary, uh, everything I say, and extra resources about culture. That's pretty cool, and you can have a full PDF that you can print to take notes on. Also, on the fourth week, I'm very, very happy to announce that uh, we have an ebook available in French with everything that we covered uh, in the four weeks of the French online summer camp. It's all in French, you have the audiobook and you have the ebook, so you can take notes, you can listen to, my, to me. And because you already understood the concepts, your understanding of, of French will be much better. So that's why very often I give the ebook and the audiobook at the end, so you can only enjoy improving your audio comprehension. It's on the blog on Common Francaise, I highly encourage you to get it. It's cheap, super cheap, it's just like a participation for you on the summer camp and you can improve your French on the go. C'est parti! So the first part of this fourth lesson is about asking for indications. Demander une direction. That's very important uh, in everyday life in France because if you're visiting or if you live here, sometimes you, ask, you have to ask your way around and it's better to have the proper French to do it. So obviously one of the most useful phrases in French are bonjour, excusez-moi. Hi or hello, excuse me. Bonjour, excusez-moi. And then you ask for what you want. This is super helpful because then people will be more open to answer your questions. Um, for example, three examples of what you can say. Bonjour, excusez-moi, vous savez où est la gare Vaugirard? Bonjour, excusez-moi. Vous savez où est la gare Vaugirard? Hi, would, uh, excuse me, do you know where is the gare Vaugirard? This is for Paris, but obviously it applies to any train station, uh, bus station or metro station anywhere. Also, you can ask, bonjour, excusez-moi, je cherche, for example, le rayon DVD d'un magasin. Bonjour, excusez-moi, je cherche, and then you can say what you're looking for. Or, bonjour, excusez-moi, vous savez où il y a des restaurants ici. Bonjour, excusez-moi, vous savez où, and then you can say whatever you want, il y a des restaurants ici, for example. And then, once, once they answer back, whether it's in French or maybe in English, because they want to be helpful, you can say merci et au revoir, or merci, bonne journée, um, merci beaucoup, anything you want, but just always end with thank you and have a good day. It's a greeting that we saw in lesson one, so I highly recommend you check it. It's the first week of the French online summer camp of Commune Française. You have everything there. Now let's talk about shops in France. So if you're in a, dans un magasin, as we say in French, uh, whether it's in France or in any francophone country, the shops are always a major source of interaction with locals because they have to speak to you and you have to speak to them. And if you're learning French, it's a good way to use your French in a simple way. So we have different kinds of shops in France. We have un petit commerce, un petit commerce. It's kind of a mom and pop shop, as you say, uh, in the US, I think. Uh, it's a small shop, like it's not a big brand. brand. It's something that is local and you can go and have usually a nice conversation. Un petit commerce. So that's why usually people try to save in, a, in a city centers because they try to die because of bigger shops outside of cities. Une épicerie. Une épicerie. It's kind of an old um, word for a small shop as well. Petit commerce covers like also bars, small bars and small restaurants as well. 
une épicerie is specifically a small place where you can buy food from, generally. Then we have une boutique de souvenirs. If you're visiting France, that's useful. Une boutique de souvenirs. It's uh, where you buy souvenirs, like plastic Eiffel Towers, ugly ones, postcards, lots of touristy stuff. Une boulangerie is a bakery. You probably already know this one. Une boulangerie, a very, very good way to use your French. And we have un marché as well. Un marché, un marché, where you can buy food. Most of the time in French markets, you cannot buy food you eat directly. It's food to be cooked, just uh, if you don't know that. So, these are the main shops where you can have interactions. Of course, you can go to a supermarket as well, uh, but these are more smaller ones and you can have a nice conversations. Um, okay, so now we're going to cover the scripts where you can use your French. And I know that students often ask me for scripts and that I, they like it when I give them to them because they never notice that lots of French is always the same, just like in your own language. And in my culture, it's the same. We always use the same ones. And if you don't know them, they're very, very hard to catch. So always start with bonjour or bonsoir, depending on the the time of the day, bonjour before 6 p.m., bonsoir after 6 p.m. Never ever ever say bonne nuit as good evening, good night. Never, this is just before bed, never bonne nuit. We saw that in week one, so I'm not going to repeat all the greetings, but use them, use the greetings from lesson one. How to ask for something? I know that maybe this is not the way you learned it, but I can tell you this is how we say. So you can say, je voudrais, and then you ask for what you're looking for. Je voudrais une baguette bien cuite. I would like, that's conditional. Je voudrais, I would like, une baguette bien cuite, a well-cooked baguette. Also, something that students have a lot of issues with sometimes because they've never been to France, it's je vais vous prendre. Je vais vous prendre, for example, deux carottes. Je vais vous prendre deux carottes. It's the way we say it. I know lots of students struggle with it, some completely refuse to use it, even to think it's true. But honestly, every time I go to a bakery here in Grenoble, I hear people saying it, I'm like, yes, what I teach is true. So that's just the way we say it. Je vais vous prendre. It means literally, I will take from you. Don't overthink it. That's what we say. Try and use it and you will see people smiling because you speak their own language. Also, it's very important to be polite in modern French, to always add s'il vous plaît as well. Don't forget that. Some people are super rude and try to correct you and tell you you didn't say it. I hate people doing that. So be proactive and say bonjour, merci and s'il vous plaît all the time. Okay? So that was basic French for interactions in the shop to ask for something. Now, if you're a bit of an advanced learner and you already know that because maybe you've been in some of my premium courses where I teach that, uh, you can say something else. Uh, it's something I say when I buy things. For example, vous avez des radis? Do you have some radishes? Vous avez des? And then you say what you're looking for. Or you can say as well, il vous reste des? Or une ou un, il vous reste des croissants, for example. Il vous reste is do you still have? And that's useful because that's colloquial, that's very simple, and that's everyday French that you can use in France. Il vous reste des croissants, do you still have some croissants? Obviously, this has to be at the end of the morning or the end of the day because if you go there at 7 a.m., it doesn't mean anything. Obviously, they have croissants at the bakery at 7 a.m. Something else that students are very surprised and they like when I teach them that is what's next? Once you ask for something, they gave it to you. Okay, I think the baker just said something. I have no idea what. I'm going, just going to smile and pretend I understood. They always say the same. They say, et avec ceci, et avec ceci, sometimes et avec ça, but it's mostly et avec ceci. It means do you want something else with it? Et avec ceci ou et avec ça. If you happen to come to France very soon or in any other francophone country, listen, they say it. Also, you can, they can say, ce sera tout. Will this be all? Ce sera tout. Again, super useful because 
as soon as you know what it means and you expect them to say it, everything's easier because you don't have to process the phrase every time because you know it's going to happen. And uh, to answer that, if you don't want anything else, if you do just ask for it, you can say ce sera tout merci. Ce sera tout merci. Again, it's very simple, but if no one ever told you that, it's very hard to guess. Something else is trying to climb on me. Um, at the end, you can just say merci, bonne journée, or merci, au revoir, and then you go. Again, greetings are very important, even if you go. Now let's talk about coffee. I know that this has a huge success with students because they always ask for café au lait before knowing that no one ever asks for this in a café. So let's cover this topic. So if you are not in a shop and you're in a café or in a restaurant, we don't say acheter something. We say commander, to order, commander, okay? So that applies to un café, un café, un restaurant, un restaurant, uh, un bar, uh, what else? Everything else. A bistro. Anything you consume food in is where you order. Commande. So where can you order? If you're going to a cafe or a bar, you have different options. You have au comptoir. It's at the counter. Au comptoir. Au comptoir. That's the that's super local thing that only people who've been there many, many times go. I'm, I've never ordered at the comptoir, but lots of people do. Um, and you're just standing or just sitting on a very high stool and you can talk to the, to the coffee owner or the waiter. Uh, I usually do en table, à table ou en terrasse. À table, it's as a ta at a table. À table, some people say en salle as well, which is the, the room of the cafe. À table, at a table, en salle, it's exactly the same, it's just a different name. Or en terrasse. La terrasse is a very important place in a cafe or a bar. It's the outside of it. It applies to a restaurant as well, obviously. La terrasse, or we say en terrasse, boire un café en terrasse. It's on the outside part of the cafe. Side note, if you're a smoker, on some of them you're not supposed to smoke, on other you are supposed to smoke. If you're a smoker, always ask if it's okay to smoke to people around you. If you're not, some people will ask, some people won't. So that's a very gray area about smoking en terrasse, but inside it's completely forbidden. So if you're going to a bar or a, caf or a cafe to make sure that they notice you, and sometimes it's mandatory, when you enter, you can ask, can I sit somewhere? Can I have a coffee? So you can say, for example, bonjour, on peut prendre un café en terrasse, on est quatre. Bonjour, on peut prendre un café en terrasse, on est quatre. Hi, can we have a coffee outside? Well, just four people. This way, you're sure you have um, a proper table that is not booked for someone else. They know you're there. And also, it's always nicer to make sure that it's okay to sit. So I always do it, unless I understand that I don't need to, but I very often do it just to make sure I'm at the right place at the right time. Also, if you want to ask something special, for example, if you can have lunch, you can say bonjour, on peut déjeuner. Bonjour, on peut déjeuner. Even if it's lunchtime, they assume you're going to have lunch, but it's always better to make sure that they still have room available, the chef is still there, they can serve you, because in French restaurants, they're serving times. If you're outside of them, they won't serve you food. Sorry. Um, the people we order to are un serveur or une serveuse. Un serveur or une serveuse is the term for waiter in French. Un serveur or une serveuse. You might have heard of garçon. Garçon is the way we talk about them. Un garçon de café or they talk about themselves, but never ever ever say garçon to ask for someone. Never. That's just old fashioned. Might be rude, I don't know, but I absolutely never do it not garçon. Garçon is just the way they talk about themselves sometimes, but not always, and the way we sometimes talk about them in an old-fashioned way. Um, the simpler way to ask for a coffee, which is the way I do, is just super simple. Bonjour, un café s'il vous plaît. Bonjour, un café s'il vous plaît. When the waiter is coming to your table asking for what you want, it's very simple, very polite, it's what I do. Bonjour, un café, s'il vous plaît. You have other ways too. 
ask for something. For, for example, you can ask, je vais prendre un DK. Je vais prendre un DK. DK stands in French for décaféiné, which means décaféinated for coffee. Un DK. Je vais prendre un DK. So these are two different ways to say it. Uh, if you want the same as the person with you, there are very simple ways. You can say pareil merci, pareil merci, the same, thank you. You can also say pour moi aussi, merci, pour moi aussi, merci. So you see, again, it's just like for the scripts for buying something. It's simple, but if no one ever told you, you will be struggling every time you ask for something at a cafe to try to form a new sentence that's actually almost right. That's simple. That's the way we say it. Okay, so now, what can you order? Un café is the simplest one. That's the coffee. Un café. If you want a smaller one, that's un espresso. Un espresso, it's the usual default coffee in French. Uh, un espresso. If you want a cappuccino, same word, un cappuccino. The way we talk about bigger coffees is un américain. Un américain is, uh, I think it's an espresso with extra water. I never drink those, so I have no experience, but that's what my dad has. Un américain or un café allongé as well. Un américain is a bigger cup of coffee, just like you have in the US. I just know because I've been there recently, uh, but I don't know how they're served abroad. Um, so un américain or un café allongé are the bigger size coffee. Uh, if you want cream or milk, there are two options. You can say un café crème or un noisette. Un café crème is cream and coffee. Un noisette, un noisette is, uh, I think, coffee with a bit of milk in it. Again, I'm not a huge fan of milk, so I never have those, but that's what people say. And if you are an advanced student, you may be wondering, wait, Geraldine, hazelnut in French is noisette. We say une noisette. Why not une noisette for that? That's because it's a tricky way. It's because we say un café noisette, un café noisette. And because it's obvious we're talking about coffee, we remove café in the middle and we say un noisette. So une noisette is a hazelnut. Un noisette is a coffee with milk. And you can tell me, but why not un café au lait? I've been ordering café au lait for years in Paris. Well, never order café au lait in France. It's a huge cliché. Uh, café au lait is the coffee with milk that you have in your pajamas at breakfast in a bowl. No one ever orders café au lait in France. No French person does it. Unless it's a super breakfast fancy hipster place that wants to do it on purpose. But if it's 2 p.m. and you want to have a coffee with milk, you don't want un café au lait. You want un noisette or uh, you want un café crème. Just pick what you want, but don't do un café au lait. Um, if you don't drink lots of coffee like I do, you can ask for tea, which is le thé in French. Le thé, that's easy. But if you want herbal tea, it's not thé aux herbes. No. It's une infusion or une tisane. Une infusion or une tisane. That's for herbal tea. If you want to have a glass of water on the side, most of the time when you order a coffee, they often bring you a glass of, of water. We say un verre d'eau. Un verre d'eau. Okay? Uh, it's not always, but I see this more and more and more. Um, and I wanted to say something about uh, a tip that I saw because I was visiting France recently and I, I saw several tourists around me and they made this mistake that the waiter pushed them to do a bottle of water. In France, uh, tap water is free. Tap water is 99.999% um, uh, drinkable. And uh, if it's in a restaurant, it will be drinkable. But waiters often ask tourists, do you want still water or mineral or um, water with sparkling, sparkling water? And uh, most tourists say mineral water or still water. And then they bring you a bottle of Evian or bad or Evian or any other brand of uh, still water. And that's a very, very tr big tourist trap because French people never do that. When we want uh, still water, we ask for une carafe. Une carafe is tap water. Uh, it's free um, and that's what we do. And I was, at, I was at a restaurant 
at a table next to, I think they were Germans. And as soon as I saw that, I wrote in my notebook, tell your students about that. So if you're in a restaurant and you just want still super simple water, just ask for une carafe. Don't be tripped in, uh, trapped, tricked, tricked into asking for uh, a bottle of Evian, unless you want to drink Evian, which is a very good choice, but know that. If you want still water, ask for une carafe, okay? That's my tip for today. I want to finish on something. The super simple phrase to ask for a coffee in French is Bonjour, je vais vous prendre un expresso s'il vous plaît, merci. Bonjour, je vais vous prendre un expresso s'il vous plaît, merci. Obviously, you can replace expresso with any coffee you want, tea, orange juice, whatever. But here you have all the elements, the greetings, uh, the thank yous, the please and the goodbye and uh, what you want in the middle. So if you learn that, you can go everywhere and ask for anything you want and you will sound like a local. Obviously, you have an accent, but at least they know that you know what you're talking about. So you can drink it by reading the newspaper at the bar or the coffee and uh, plan your day of visits and have an exciting time in France. So I hope you like this uh, lesson. Now tell me in French if you dare, that's a very good way to practice your French. Qu'est-ce que tu as appris aujourd'hui dans la leçon? Qu'est-ce que tu as appris aujourd'hui dans la leçon? That's the end of the four week French online summer camp by Commune Française. I hope you liked it. As you saw, I tried new things. So tell me in the comments below what you thought about this format. What if, what else you, would you, would you like to have in the future? I hope I'm not going to be eaten by ants before the end of this lesson. Um, I said uh, in the introductions, we made an ebook and an audiobook for you all in French that covers everything that we put together on the four weeks. So it's both a recap and a training for you to improve your oral comprehension. And that can be tricky. So you already learned everything. Now you can uh, cover all the lessons again in French with me. If you want, you can download the PDF of the lesson on the blog, communefrances.com. It's free. Just leave your first name, name, your email, and you will have access immediately. If you like this video, I would love for you to share it with a Francophile friend because I'm sure they want to speak French better and they would love to hear this from you. So thank you, have a lovely day, bonne journée et à la prochaine. Salut!